back to our symposium. And in the, this next block of talks, we actually have two talks. The first is by Matthias Sebastian Kruger, who is coming all the way from Germany to be here to present. Um, he's a specialist on microtrons and has some interesting things to show us about um, microtonality on <coughs> many different keyboard instruments. So there'll be some surprises. And then following his talk, uh, Forrest Moody, who is also our pianist for the day, performing all these uh, wonderful pieces, will uh, give a talk about his experience learning this repertoire and working with microtones on a keyboard instrument. So. Thank, you. Yeah, thank you a lot for inviting me for this uh, great symposium, how we came together, uh, I will talk about later during my uh, lecture. I started into my musical life with the piano in the age of five and a half, and soon I wanted not only to play notes, but also to write them myself. But I didn't want to hear them. Presumably, I knew why. Fortunately, one day, my piano teacher ignored that and played them to me. It was a horrible experience. <clears throat> but it didn't lead me to stop writing notes, but to try to give them a sense. Such as slowly grew into composing. First adapting the music I played. I tried to appropriate Baroque, classical stylistics, chants, and so on, for my instrument, the standard piano. Later, in the meantime, also singing in a choir and playing the violin, I proceeded to other instrumentations too. As a teenager, becoming familiar with the music of the 20th century more and more, I used the piano mostly as a chamber music instrument and I started to ask myself why I didn't have any idea to write a solo piece for my instrument. In that time, I had a very good physics teacher at school who was a passionate amateur musician as well. Extra for me, he treated the theme acoustics notably extensively. <clears throat> Such I heard something about overtones for the first time quite soon in my life. The first piece where I tried to come to terms with that was my first real piece for piano solo of all things. It was one of the worst pieces I've ever written. <clears throat> Experiencing something about microtones in contemporary music subsequently, thanks to personal contact to Klaus Huber and Georg Friedrich Haas, and thanks to the first acquaintances of Nono's light music <clears throat> and of the French Musique Spectrale during my last years at school and my first semesters as a composition student at the Musikhochschule Cologne, I got an idea why I wrote nearly nothing for piano solo. This black box, if there is no tonal context in the music for, always sounds so temperate. So, I started <clears throat> searching for possibilities how to teach the piano microtones. The first obvious option was including harmonics produced by touching the strings inside the piano. Again, with the piano in chamber music, or in ensemble music context, I used them together with normal piano pitches in a Hocketus-like way for pitches which just suited to the overtone fields which my music moved in. But soon I noticed that a harmonic on the piano is different to a harmonic, for example, on a bowed string instrument. If you play a harmonic, on a string instrument, you get, with a bit of luck, a very pure and stable pitch. On a piano, it's different. With a harmonic on a piano, its provenance always gleams 
In other words, it carries around its fundamental and its spectrum always with itself like a backpack. I will just <coughs> show it. family C, that it comes from the family C, from the fundamental C, is very clearly listenable. And if you need it, for example, as basis um, for well, another overturn field, it becomes quite difficult. For example, we have it here. I write it like that. A little bit lower B. Here it's fundamental. And well, if you want to turn this lower B in something different, so not a seventh partial anymore, but for example, an eighth partial, and well, so with a cork, for example. Consisting of those pitches four, seven, eight, nine, ten. So <coughs> with the with this lower B flat uh, as fundamental, it's difficult with the piano flageolet. Because <coughs> you still hear the C spectrum in the background, and so more or less, if you will compose this for other instruments, you have something like a B spectrum situation. And well, if you're touching the string, just a triple beside the harmonic, you get something more like a multiphonic. Multiphonics by Caspar Johannes Walter about 12 years ago, who is composition professor at the Musikhochschule Basel in the meantime. Thanks to my professor for electroacoustic composition, Eric Onya, at that time. What a fascinating possibility to extend the piano towards microtonality, microtonality, sorry, above all if one is focusing in composing with overturned contextualizations like me. Different to multiphonics on line instruments, piano multiphonics are very pure, very stable and reproducible on every string in the low register. By the way, the same works on every string instrument in the low register on the open strings. The limitation is that these multiphonic harmonics are, like every harmonic, as I explained, on the piano, based on tempered fundamentals, and thus they are usable only in overtone fields based on tempered fundamentals. Caspar Johannes Walter and Erik Onya made a very systematic and comprehensive cartography of the piano string, or its first half, with all possible harmonics and their possible points to touch, 
and harmonic multiphonics, which I would like to demonstrate here now. It's this one. It's not terribly good readable uh, because I, well, I used, uh, when I scanned it, 600 uh, dpi, but well, nevertheless, here I think, well, the numbers uh, sometimes is a little bit difficult to read. But you see on the left side, you see every uh, harmonics and also alternative points for uh, touching them. Interesting is, for example, um, the seventh partial, um, which can't be touched on its first point because it's under the damper, but where it's written two sevenths, that's the point to uh, touch this uh, harmonic, and it was also the point where I touched it right now. And on the right side, you see all the possible and the clearly uh, identifiable multiphonics which are um, possible on the piano and the points where to find them. I can demonstrate very easy, it's just this 15611 because it's right behind the lamp. The first official piano solo piece in my oeuvre from 2019. It was written for the project 250 piano pieces for Beethoven for Beethoven's 215th birthday, 50th birthday by the pianist Susanne Kessel von Bonn. The point of departure is the recitative from the Piano Sonata Opus 110. I imply that Beethoven is here tracing the subtle difference between the dominant seventh, without those resolution, no decently educated European goes to bed, and the deeper, non-dissolving, natural sector. By means of the just discussed piano techniques, I take a close look at the floating between the natural seventh and the dominant seventh, and between other intervals of the partial series and the temperate tones next to, the, to them, as well as their possible harmonic, hypermediantic contextualization scattered throughout the piano. With harmonics on the piano, the fundamental always in the backpack, a high risk of just missing it in the heat of the moment, a very notable difference in the quality and volume of sound and C sharp 3 as fifth partial of A0 
the lowest possible harmonic with a noteworthy microtonal deviation from the temperate pitches. Good reasons for searching further possibilities of producing microtones on a standard piano without bothering a piano tuner and a second piano, what is always so expensive. I stumbled upon the Klangarbeiterte Flügel by Hans Carsten Rehke, a totally underrated and vastly unknown German composer and, instrument, uh, and inventor of instruments. He uses, for example, cat cork sticked on the piano string cords. <clears throat> With that, depending to the size of the cord and its position, the pitch can be lowered microtonally. I didn't bring a cork now with me, because if you want so, you could just try it at home by your own on the grand piano or here in the uh, Musik, uh, in the Kunstuni. Uh, I only recommend you to use synthetic cork for that. Disadvantages is here that there is also a very notable difference in the quality and volume of sound. It carries the sound towards a slightly inharmonic bell sound. The use is, of it is limited to the lower and middle register of the piano, as well as it is difficult to do a really exact tuning with it and to keep it stable. And one day I read by chance on Facebook something is good for some, something, about the Macchiano device by the Finnish jazz pianist Kari Ikonen. Kari Ikonen invented this device for being able to play also Arabish Makama on the piano. Such the denomination Macchiano is composed from the two words Makam and Piano. It's this guy. With strong magnets, the string core is pinched off like with a capodasto, and thus the pitch is raised microtonally. I'm going to demonstrate that. It's possible on both sides of the piano. Here, you see it live. And I put this under the piano, and here we are. It's the C. The B is this on the side and what? Maybe the first time you heard a real glissando on the piano. And as I said, it's also possible to have it on the back side of the piano, on the strings which are uncovered and covered by others. So, <coughs> which is it? precision in tuning than with the chorus. But it's also limited to the middle low from that the strings start to be bichord and to the middle register of the piano and it's hardly possible to tune two adjacent string chords except if one can be prepared at the front side and the other on the back side of the piano. And well, this device is pretty expensive. I bought 12 of them. That's really enough for my pocket. 
what is not possible with all of that what I demonstrated so far is to establish a closed complete tuning system let's say an alternative tonal system here you see just this for this you need a specially constructed instruments or designed software what we are in the heart of this symposium with now the microtonal piano the first real microtonal piano I came across without knowing anything about the name Juan Carrillo was the 16th tone piano in the classroom at the Conservatoire Supérieur de Paris where I studied in 2003 and 4. With some additional keys it just spans over one octave from C4 to C5. I loved it. Funnily enough that at the same time the first and as, I far, as far as I knew the only piece for microtonal keyboard in this case two microtonal keyboards with different equidistant scales in different registers was written. Rat by Enno Poppe. Unfortunately, I always missed to ask him what software he did it with. Already before I played microtones on a keyboard for the very first time, when I accompanied the production of the opera Il Combattimento di Tancredi e Clorinda by Sebastian Semper at the Musikhochschule Köln in 2002. But there is not an equidistant scale used, but a non-equidistant 12-tone scale which could be programmed to the keyboard directly. Later, after knowing about the composer Juan Carrillo, thanks to one of my students here in Graz, when I substituted Georg Friedrich Haas here 11 years ago, I heard about other replications of the Carrillo pianos. These are pianos in different edus, equidistant uh, divisions of the octave, by the Mexican composer and constructor Juan Carrillo, who acted above all in the first half of the 20th century. Roman Grotwig told me about the 12th tone piano in Bern, for example. And well, I saw and heard some quarter tone pianos, which are constructed with something like two manuals, like an organ. Something which can be rebuilt quite easily with two keyboards without any special software needed. The 16th tone upright piano I met across again in Basel in the classroom of Georg Friedrich Haas. It's the most common replication of a Carillo piano, which a couple of exemplars built by the German piano company Sauter are existing scattered over the world. Because of that, and because of the transport of a piano is always pretty expensive, one of these 16th tone pianos appear above all at special events and composers then write solo pieces for it, all of them between C4 and C5. I thought by myself, well, what a great chamber and ensemble music instrument actually even if I prefer the 12th tone piano, respectively 72 Elu piano, which suits more to my music. With all of these precisely tuned microtones, a perfect intonation backbone for other instruments and singers. And such I decided to use it like that, in a piece together with alto flute, standard piano and double bass, which isn't performed so far, unfortunately. Harte Schale, Weiche Kern is the name of the, of the piece. As I was aware that I limit the potential locations for performing it with that, I thought from the very beginning about a version with keyboard coded to a 16th tone piano. So in the beginning, 
This was just a pragmatic consideration. I talked about that purpose to my former fellow student from Erik Onyas' class for electroacoustic composition in Basel, Sandor Barzellini, when I met him by chance. He answered, well, that's not easy at all, at all to program, but I will try. And he found a solution which works only for a couple of Yamaha keyboard types, however. Right from the beginning, without me having asked him about his patch, offered the option to choose the reference pitch and thus the register and the division of the octave flexibly. It's particularly great that it's possible to change the register during the piece because the pitch range is very small. With 88 keys of the keyboard in a 16 tone uh, <coughs> division respectively, respectively 96 tones per octave, less than one octave. Such an unexpected gift which inspired me instantly, for example, to the piece which will be premiered in the evening concert. And I wrote a version of the piece Hatte Schade Weiche Ken, mentioned above, for flute, 12 tone keyboard, standard piano, and violoncello for the Emma Trio Vienna, which is supposed to be premiered next year. Subsequently, I searched for partners for modifying the patch for that it is possible to use it with any standard keyboard, not only a few Yamaha keyboards, like in the patch before. As I am too stupid and too less a digital native for programming such a complex thing myself. When I met Martin and Alicia for the first time at the premiere of my string quartet, in March at Kultum Graz, they were instantly interested about. I won't say anything about the technical backgrounds of the coding, because that is to Martin. Um, it works like the patch by Sandro Balzarini with the keyboard's own sounds, respectively samples, so there is no need to buy an expensive software sampler. Now I show you the patch. Yes. Here we have it. So, uh, the most important thing is this Edo mo uh, module. At the left side, you choose the input reference pitch, on the other side, the output reference pitch, and then works the division of the octave. So, I can, for example, decide a very low um, input reference pitch, but which has a very high output reference pitch, so it's very high, and all of this part of the score is in a very, of, of the piece is in a very high region, after middle region, for example, or somewhere else and also I could change the division of the octave also during the piece just one click and we have got the other preset for it for the pianist it obviously brings a special challenge with it as the keys he or she is publishing uh, not publishing pushing sorry don't coincide with the resulting pitches. We will now hear an example of the piece, just the beginning.
These are, for example, the pitches for the part two of the piece. So I have to write on the upper states the notes to be pushed and on, uh, on the lower states, sorry, and on the upper states there are the pieces, uh, the pitches sounding. Here is the beginning of the piece and you see here the keyboard fingering and above the up and that's the keyboard sound and I think we would like to hear that. Thank you. The rest of the piece we just keep for the concert. The piece consists in different overtone chords, in the end also distorted overtone chords, connected each by one hinge pitch in different grain sizes, as you can see here. Different overtone chords in red, that is the uh, pitch which stays always stable and here I've broken the numbers of the partials and also um, below the well, imaginary fundamental of it. I can also, well it's now very quickly analyzed, um, I could also send you this paper which is not only the, um, uh, the first page of the score but also already a small analyze of it. As I said, it's absolutely necessary to write two parts in the score. One with the push keys and one with the resulting pitches. And it's really a challenge for the pianists. As the keys, as I said, are completely different to the sound they are bringing out. And I've still ideas for other keyboard tuning softwares. For example, where you can tune non-equidistant scales, where theoretically every key of the keyboard has its own individually tuned pitch. Or equidistant divisions of other intervals as the octave, achieving scales which do not transpose by the octave. For example, with a ninth a frame interval for having, for talking with Gérard Fisset, a spectre dilaté, or a seventh a frame interval for having a spectre contracté, or a twelfth a frame interval, notably interesting, for using the Bolin Pierce scale, which divides um, a twelve in, well, more or less three quarter turn steps. By the way, such microtonal keyboard softwares are not only interesting for being used in concert music, but also as a practice device for other instrumentalists and above all singers. Often singer singers tell me that it is particularly difficult for them to sing microtonal music because they don't have any reference for studying it. And they are right. This software produces relief. 
Imagine you could compose a microtonal opera, write a reduction for two or three keyboards with that software. You still need two or three repetitors for it, and that's it. Well, the repetitors will maybe curse you and Martin and me as well. For the end, the aspect of studying microtones with singers leads me to the last microtonal keyboard instruments which I would like to have at least a sidekick to, organs. In this case, non-electronic organs. The first time I met a microtonally tuned organ was when I conducted the premiere of the piece Begegnungen for seven singers, lute and seven gambas by Mark Steinhäuser in 2008. The choir master of the Orlando de Lasso Ensemble involved in that practiced the microtones with the singers with an organ positive with stopped pipes. It was very easy to tune down microtonally every pipe of the stop. It's an attractive idea composing for such an instrument with 12 non equidistant pitches per octave, whereupon every octave could be tuned individually. Even small glissandi, like on the piano with the macchiano, would be doable. And then we already heard about it. The Archiorgan. In Basel, there was built um, at the Musikhochschule on the initiative from Johannes Keller from the Schola Cantorum Basel and Caspar Johannes Walter, the composition professor at the Hochschule Basel, such an instrument. They are both the directors of the Studio 31 Plus Basel. 31 plus, about 31, we just heard today. I don't have to say too much about how this instrument is constructed, because the, we already heard, and also not about the, uh, the tuning system. Um, also with split keys, and in the end, with this extended uh, mean tone um, temperament, it has on two manuals, 36 notes per octave. In ad addition to that, every pipe can be tuned down microtonally with small slices of wood set on the pipe. So you can realize tunings which are really weird, non equidistant, non transposing by the octave. And even with, um, without those uh, slices of wood um, by chance um, it's also possible with a lot of chords to have a nearly perfect septa, a pure septa um, with this tuning as well. Further a special construction is implemented which allows to play the archi organ automatically digitally like a player piano. Theoretically, we could even play the arch organo now from here, but I haven't figured out, unfortunately, how that works so far. So for the end of my presentation, I give the word to Johannes Keller and Kaspar Johannes Walter from Basel with an extract from a YouTube video, which they present the arch organo in. Now we can have it. Now it can be done. Uh, another really beautiful thing for the practice, I think, of all the historical and contemporary, is that the uh, instruments um, perfectly uh, suits uh, to other instruments. So it is uh, clear, very clear, so you can really detect the pitches incredibly clear, but not extremely loud. So, in combination to uh, fingers, for example, it's what we do. But also all other instruments, also contemporary instruments like Freud and so we can try it. Um, it is a perfect, perfect, perfect. Yeah. And what you hear now.
This is not a good sign. <laughs> the, the internet seems to be weak. Ah! Thank you very much, and now I'm open for your questions. Thank you. 